Saints Row franchise has existed and done so many amazing things. Where do you go from there? It's kind of hard to figure out. Naturally, we look at all the things that we've done in the past, but the more we did that, the more we started to discover that we're actually blocking ourselves from the massive creativity we have at the studio. Well, maybe if you listen to your fans, you guys will still be around. What up, everyone? Welcome to another edition of Red Ace Talks, the show that we talk about everything and anything. And before we get to this episode, I just remind you guys that if you do like the episode, just hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, comment down below. Let me know what you think. And also hit that bell icon that we get notified about future Red Ace production projects, such as music videos, uh, chug reviews, even, hey, Red Ace Talks. Hey, hey, ha ha, ho ho, here we go. Let's start with this whole thing. And that is, we're going to be talking about Volition. Yes, if you guys don't know who Volition is, they're the ones that made the whole Saints Row franchise. Well, they're done. They're done, son. Kaput. Finito. They are not here anymore. They are shut it down. And I'm going to put my two cents in right after I do the reporting. So let, let's get this whole thing started. And that is, this is from Game Informer. Uh, Saints Row developer Volition Games has been shut down. Yesterday, Volition Games, the studio behind the Saints Row and Red Faction franchises, announced it, it was shutting down. As said before, effective immediately. Get out. <laughs> uh, today it released a new statement discussing its 30-year history and thanking the talent that has come through its doors across the three decades and its community of fans. Hmm, yeah, we're definitely going to be talking about this. Thank you guys for Game Informer because uh, this whole thing looks like a three-paragraph situation. And they uh, rewrote it so we guys should read it. Because I can't read tiny letters, even though I'm wearing these thick-ass glasses. But anyways, let's get this whole thing going. And that is 30 years of making games. There are only a handful of studios in the industry that have been around for 30 years. And we took a lot of pride over Volition being one of them. Volition has been around long enough that some folks forget what we made. But they certainly know our games. Refrains such as, Volition made Descent, or Volition made Free Space, or Volition made that summer RPG with that hilarious video, which I highly doubt that people made that last one comment. I never heard anybody say that. Um, are not uncommon. Uh, sometimes it's easier to remember the games that uh, more than the studio that built them, uh, especially for those that have been around as long as we have. But all good things come to an end. And so it is with Volition. After 30 years, Volition has closed. And we wanted to say a few final words. We fucked up, guys. And sorry for, you know, calling you incels and stuff like that when you guys try to help us out. No, I, I kid. That's not what they said. They should have said that. But no. Like I said, we're going to talk about that when, when I put my two cents in. But here we go. Uh, to start, we know uh, there wouldn't be a studio without the people in it. While it may sound cliched, as those who have worked at Volition can attest, it truly is a huge family. Family. The Diesel style. <laughs> uh, Volition started with a team that had a vision for how to make the kinds of games others couldn't and refused that confidence throughout the entire company. We assembled an incredibly talented group of artists, storytellers, and creators who together built a culture that attracted top quality people who truly care for each other. Time progressed, people naturally came and went, and very often returned again. But the people were always what made Volition truly special. Do all developers feel the same? We know they do. But in the case, in this case, there truly was a unique culture of people that cared about each other like family. Aww, family. Just like family, Vin Diesel style, Fast and Furious. <laughs> Combined with uh, uh, with the will to create some of the most unique games ev every everyone created. Uh, I'm getting a little lost because I, I guess they fucked up on, on their fucking thing. Anyways, um, I continue. Uh, thank you guys so much f uh, and to every Voltonite. Voltonite. I guess they wanted to be like Hulk Hogan. Like, oh, you Voltonite brothers. Say your vitamins, eat your prayers. Every vol up is for all the Voltonites out there. <laughs> Uh, anyways, uh, who has ever worked here, you're all what made this the magical place it is to work at. And we can never say enough about how much you have meant to us in over these 30 years. Here we go. This is the part that I got to laugh about. Beyond our development family, we also wouldn't have, we wouldn't have a studio without our extended family. 
our community. For 30 years now, you have played our games. Sometimes you love them. Sometimes you've been disappointed with them. But you've always been there. We can speak for everyone who has worked at Volition when we say all the hard work and sacrifices we put in the, into these games have been for you. <laughs> oh, I contact bullshit on that one, but uh, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Uh, so let me just finish this up. Over these many years, we have enjoyed working on an extremely diverse series of games, and so many of you have come along for that ride. We can't thank you enough for sticking around with us throughout all this time. We've loved your enthusiasm every step of the way, even though those times when we, you wish we had or had it gone a certain way with the Saints Row or Red Faction or Descent. You are all why we kept making these games. And those of us who have been part of the Volition family will be eternally grateful. Farewell. <laughs> I call bullshit on that last fucking paragraph. I do. That last paragraph. That's why I laugh. Because it was them that didn't listen to the fans. The reason why they're shutting down. And let me explain. It revolves, I think Saints Row was the final nail in their coffin. Saints Row was the one that brought them up. I mean, yeah, they made these video games for 30 years, and I think Saints Row was the reason why they became so popular. And Saints Row was going to be their demise at the end. Now, like I said, I'm going to explain very quickly. Saints Row 1 and 2, people loved. It was basically gang-related, you know, in the hood. You know, you're in a gang, and... You could do a turf wars and stuff like that. Play like Grand Theft Auto style. They took, the, yeah, they actually took the idea from uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, and people loved it. I mean, everybody's favorite game is Saints Row Two. Saints Row Three, they made the Saints, you know, popular, and they were getting advertised by sports energy drinks and all that bullshit. But uh, they still had violence. Uh, I think it had like, you know, uh, the story, the storyline, the story mode, I should say, uh, was shorter. Uh, but it did have good graphics at the time and pop and music, whatever. But, you know, people didn't really have that much of a complaint. They wish it was like two, but it wasn't really complaining. But then part four came in, and that's when I guess they hired a person like Taika Waititi, you know, who made Thor Love and Thunder. <laughs> uh, the, ridiculousness, the ridiculousness of the silliness and all that other bullshit just like got pumped into affinity and... You know, this your, your your character was the President of the United States. Earth got blew up by aliens. You're in the Matrix kind of style. And honestly, there's no point in, like, you know, stealing cars because your character flew like a superhero. And uh, I don't know. The game was not Saints Row. Everybody, you know, rejected it. And then Gat Out of Hell came out. And Gat Out of Hell was made because I think the developers heard that everybody loved, you know, Johnny Gat. Very cool character. But thing is that they wanted the hood Johnny Gat and not supernatural Johnny Gat. <laughs> and I think Volition, you know, they did, uh, they, they took a break from the Saints Row series for a while. And then they came back with a Saints Row reboot, which everybody was talking about as rumored. And the rumors were true and it happened and everybody was excited. Problem was that, they're, you know, I think with some of the creators were actually telling people, well, you know, this is a Saints Row for the modern day audience. And that's what people were like, wait, what? So when you hear modern day audience, you think of watered down, meltdown, because the modern audience today now, you know, they try to attract Generation Z. Generation Z doesn't really care. And they're very offended by everything. That's what it seems like. I mean, sorry for those people who are Generation Z and don't feel that way. Well, I'm sorry, but your generation, just like how I got roped into the millennial or lazy, which we're not, um, you guys are roped into the whole sensitivity thing. And, you know, I hate to say this, but most of you guys are sensitive when it comes to this shit. And they made this game for you, <laughs> apparently. Because uh, they introduced uh, the new Saints Row. Everything is rebooted for the modern day audience. And let me just show you what they were sh uh, showing us. They showed, uh, let me scroll up a little bit. They showed these characters. And uh, this is your gang. Yeah, I shit you not. This was your gang in Saints Row Reboot. This looks, these look like people who get robbed by the original gang from Saints Row. But uh, let me introduce from right to left. Uh, we got Feminist Shondi. Shondi is a character from uh, you know Saints Row. I make a joke because it's not really Shondi, but because Shondi's more badass. But this is a feminist. I don't need a man. 
Uh, I steal cars and drive them and make men look stupid, you know. We got Urkel, Steve Urkel right here, made a guest appearance. Uh, you know, he's the financer. You know, every gang needs a finance, you know, uh, uh, person to, uh, I guess, do money, <laughs> manage money. I'm going to skip over this person for a minute because I want to get to this douchebag right here who loves to cook and bake. Loves cats, too. Oh, boy. Now, let's go back to this person right here. I'm going to highlight this. This is, the, this is the person right here that is the final nail in the coffin for Volition. Now, let me explain. Because, you know, people, they, they, you know, the fans here, modern rendition for modern audiences, they see this gang that looks like a bunch of people get beat up by the original Saints Row, uh, by the original Saints from Saints Row. And uh, the company has put that this is the boss. Now, the boss is your character. Now, granted, you were able to create your character from the original games. Now, their marketing issue, their marketing strategy, I should say, was to create more trailers just featuring this character. So it made people believe that you couldn't create a character in Saints Row. Hell, they even had the person that did the voice for this character, you know, this wannabe Rosario Dawson with Halle Berry haircut from the 90s. And they wanted you to believe that you were that character. So people were like, oh shit, this shit has gone woke. Gone woke, oh, woke to the extreme. People were upset about it. And what did uh, Volition do? Well, they went to Twitter and calling people incels and racist and sexist and every ist you could think of. Because people were actually asking them, uh, are, "Are we playing this character, or are we doing? Cre you know, or we get to, we get to create?" Of course, Volition was playing coy at the time, which I don't know why. But then they decided to, on the eleventh hour, release the video of the creator character. Now, the creator character looked awesome. It looked amazing. But the problem was is that they did it very too late because, you know, people, you know, I think it was like the 11th hour. The game was about to come out, I think, like two or three weeks uh, before they showed the, uh, the creator character. And it really didn't get people to clamoring to, you know, pre-order the game because you could pre-order all the way up to, like, I think, like the week of it comes out. The pre-orders, they, they were horrible. Now, granted, there were people that were Cease Row fans. Die hard that you know probably pre-ordered or probably waited to buy, and those who went with Volition like you guys are incels. You guys should understand that this is a new thing, and you know, so they bought the game, and then they were upset because of the glitches and the bad storytelling and the the lack of NPCs in a desert town. Desert town, which I don't know why they went with a deserted town because it's Saints Row, but stealing cars and robbing people and all that. But yeah. You know, even the fans hated it. Like, the diehard fans, the ones that were, like, sticking up for them. And they said, this is a piece of shit. So, what did Volition do? Oh, well, we're going to work out the kinks and whatnot. But, listen, a lot of techies, a lot of people told, like, the tech industry told people that it is too late. There's no way that they could even have a patch to add all these NPCs that you want. That, like, from Grand Theft Auto Five or stuff like that. Or even, like, they might fix some problems here and there. But it's the, the game is done. It's done. And uh, unfortunately, Volition was, you know, making those techies, to try to make those techies look bad, but, you know, everybody agreed. And the game is done. So Volition, you gone woke, you gone broke, you couldn't listen to people when they said, please fix the game. You had to fucking ridicule them. You had to call them incels and racists and bigots and all that other bullshit. You couldn't elaborate about the creative player. Uh, as a matter of fact, when people gave you another chance to make a Saints Row 2 reboot, after this game, this awful game was released to give you guys one more chance. You guys didn't want to listen. You guys rather put, like, DLCs and patches from fucking Dead Island 2 and some shit like that. You know, I'm pretty sure Deep Silver told you guys to do that. But, you know, you should convince Deep Silver to make a re remake of Saints Row 2. But you wanted that ESG money with, Vol uh, with Deep Silver. Didn't want to be involved with the gang stuff. You're like, oh, we got to move past the gangs and all that. We got to move past it. Nobody wanted to move past it. They wanted to go head first into it and relive their favorite game. And you didn't want to do it. So guess what? You went broke. Went broke. Went broke. Went woke. Went broke. You know, that's this, this is the meeting. And you guys fucking deserve it. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments down below. Uh, honestly, <laughs> I don't like before I let you guys go. I don't understand why these companies do this. Why they fuck around 
and find out why they fuck around with the people that pay them the money, the fans, you know, of like products or like movies, video games, and such. You know, it goes on and on, and I've been seeing this a lot. And the companies think that they think that they know what's good for us by going with the modern audience, which is Generation Z. And Generation Z doesn't even like half the shit that they fucking selling. So they 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 alienate their diehard audience. You know, they they label them as bigots and racist and you know and all those other bullshit. And then they fail. And they wonder why. Anyways, what do you guys think? I think I got asked before. Let me let you go. Uh, let, let me know in the comments down below what you think, uh, but I gotta get going. I'll see you guys in the next video, but before I leave, for the past, the present, and for the future, keep brutal guys, stay safe, and stay tuned.